Today, we unveil a simple yet powerful technique that has the potential to transform your reality. Prepare to unlock the secrets of manifestation as we delve into the art of repetition. As Neville taught us, our lives are shaped by our assumptions, by the beliefs we hold about ourselves and the world around us. And one of the most effective ways to shift our assumptions is through repetition. By repeating certain words or phrases, we can impress upon our subconscious mind the reality we wish to create. You see, repetition is not just about reciting words mindlessly. It's about imbuing those words with intention and emotion. When we repeat affirmations or mantras with conviction and belief, we send a clear signal to the universe of our desires. Neville Goddard always talked about how important it is to assume that what you want has already happened. He said that if you can imagine what it feels like to have your wish come true and you keep on believing in that feeling, then eventually it will come true in your life. And one of the best ways to make that belief stick is by repeating it over and over again. Let's break it down a bit. When Neville talked about assuming, he meant that you should act as if what you want has already happened. So, for example, if you want a new job, you should start acting like you already have that job. You should feel the excitement and confidence that comes with it, even before it actually happens. And the key word here is persist. You can't just assume something once and then forget about it. You have to keep on believing in it, even when things don't seem to be going your way. You have to persist in that feeling of having your wish fulfilled, no matter what. That's where repetition comes in. By repeating your assumption over and over again, you're reinforcing it in your mind. You're telling yourself, this is true, this is real, this is happening. And the more you repeat it, the more your mind starts to believe it. Think of it like learning a new skill. At first, it might feel awkward and uncomfortable, but the more you practice, the easier it becomes. It's the same with assuming. The more you repeat your assumption, the more natural it starts to feel, until eventually it becomes second nature. But here's the thing. Repetition isn't just about saying the same thing over and over again. It's about really feeling it in your heart and soul. It's about embodying the belief that what you want is already yours, and letting that belief guide your actions and decisions. Narrator, Neville understood the importance of persistence in the manifestation process. He encouraged us to repeat our chosen affirmations or phrases until they become ingrained in our subconscious mind. For it is through repetition that we create new neural pathways and reprogram our beliefs. Another way to strengthen the power of repetition is by writing down affirmations. This means taking a pen and paper and actually writing out your desires, just like you're telling a story about what you want your life to be like. But here's the trick, you write them as if they've already happened, in the present tense. So, instead of saying, I will be confident, you write, I am confident. Instead of saying, I want to be successful, you write, I am successful. You see, by writing in the present tense, you're telling your subconscious mind that these things have already come true. You're planting the seeds of your desires deep within your mind, where they can take root and grow. When you write down your affirmations, you're not just repeating them in your head, you're giving them physical form. You're putting them out into the world, where you can see them, touch them, and interact with them. And this adds another layer of power to your manifestation practice. Think of it like planting a garden. When you write down your affirmations, you're like a gardener planting seeds in fertile soil. And just like seeds need water and sunlight to grow, your affirmations need repetition and belief to manifest. But here's the thing, writing down your affirmations is more than just a one-time activity. It's something you need to do regularly, like watering your plants. So, set aside time each day to write out your desires, maybe in a journal or on sticky notes that you can place around your home. And don't worry about getting it perfect. The important thing is to get your thoughts down on paper and let them flow freely. You might be surprised at what comes out when you start writing. You might uncover hidden desires or insights about yourself that you didn't even know were there. As you write, try to really feel the emotions behind your affirmations. Imagine what it would feel like to already have your desires manifested in your life. Would you feel joyful? Excited? Grateful? Whatever it is, try to tap into those feelings as you write. 
Neville often spoke of the importance of self-concept in manifesting our desires. He said, Change your conception of yourself, and you will automatically change the world in which you live. And repetition is a key tool in reshaping our self-concept. I can share from my own experience how repeating affirmations has changed my life. At first, I wasn't sure if it would work, but I decided to give it a try. So, every day, I started saying positive statements that matched the reality I wanted to create for myself. I said things like, I am confident I am successful, and I am loved. At first, it felt a bit strange, like I was just talking to myself. But as I kept repeating these affirmations, something amazing started to happen. I began to believe them. I started to feel more confident in myself and my abilities. I felt like I could take on any challenge that came my way. It was like a light switched on inside me. I started to see myself in a whole new way. Instead of focusing on my flaws and limitations, I began to see my strengths and potential. I realized that I had the power to create the life I wanted, simply by changing my thoughts and beliefs. As I continued to repeat my affirmations, I noticed other changes happening too. I felt more empowered to take action towards my goals. I started to make healthier choices and take better care of myself. I even noticed improvements in my relationships, as I became more open and authentic with others. But perhaps the most profound shift of all was how aligned I felt with my true self. It was like I had finally found my inner compass, guiding me towards my highest potential. I no longer felt lost or unsure of myself. Instead, I felt a deep sense of purpose and clarity about who I was and what I wanted out of life. And all of this was possible because of the power of repetition. By consistently repeating affirmations that reflected the reality I wanted to create, I was able to reprogram my subconscious mind and align myself with my desires. But remember, repetition requires consistency and dedication. Just as a seed needs time to germinate and grow into a mighty tree, so too do our affirmations need time to take root in our subconscious mind. Neville liked to compare manifesting to sailing a boat. Imagine you're on a boat, sailing towards a beautiful island. You have a clear vision of where you want to go, and you're determined to get there. But suddenly, you start changing directions every few minutes. First, you sail east, then you turn north, then south, and so on. With each change in direction, you're moving further away from your destination. Eventually, you realize that you're not getting any closer to the island, no matter how hard you try. This is the analogy Neville often used to emphasize the importance of consistency in manifesting. Just like sailing a boat, if you keep changing directions, if you keep wavering in your focus and your repetition practice, you won't reach your desired destination. You'll end up going in circles, feeling frustrated and confused and wondering why your manifestations aren't coming to fruition. Consistency is key in manifesting. It's like planting seeds in a garden. If you scatter them randomly and forget to water them, they won't grow into healthy plants. But if you plant them in fertile soil, water them regularly, and give them plenty of sunlight, they'll thrive and bloom into beautiful flowers. Similarly, when it comes to manifestation, you need to stay consistent with your repetition practice. That means repeating your affirmations or mantras regularly, without wavering or getting distracted. It's not enough to say them once and then forget about them. You have to keep reinforcing your intentions, keep reminding yourself of what you want, and keep aligning yourself with the frequency of your desires. Think of it like this. Every time you repeat your affirmations or mantras, you're sending a message to the universe. You're telling the universe, This is what I want and I believe it's coming to me. But if you're inconsistent in your practice, if you say your affirmations one day and then forget about them the next, you're sending mixed signals to the universe. It's like telling the universe, I want this, but maybe not really, which confuses the manifestation process and slows down your progress. So, to avoid this, make repetition a daily habit. Set aside time each day to sit quietly, close your eyes, and repeat your affirmations or mantras with focus and intention. You can do this in the morning when you wake up, before you go to bed at night, or any time during the day when you have a few moments to yourself. The key is to be consistent and committed to your practice. 
And remember, consistency doesn't mean you have to spend hours repeating affirmations or mantras every day. Even just a few minutes of focused repetition can make a big difference. It's about quality over quantity, making each repetition count and staying committed to your practice over time. By staying consistent with your repetition practice, you're not only reinforcing your intentions and aligning yourself with your desires, but you're also building momentum and creating a powerful energy field around you. This energy field acts like a magnet, attracting your desires to you with greater ease and speed. Neville often talked about the power of visualization, which means picturing something in your mind like a movie. It's like daydreaming, but with a purpose. When you visualize, you create a clear mental picture of what you want. It's like making a blueprint for your dreams. Imagine you're planning a vacation to a beautiful beach. Before you even book your tickets, you might start visualizing yourself lying on the warm sand, feeling the sun on your skin, and hearing the sound of the waves crashing against the shore. You might imagine yourself snorkeling in the crystal clear water, exploring colorful coral reefs, and swimming alongside tropical fish. The more vividly you imagine these scenes, the more real they feel. Similarly, when you visualize your desires, you're creating a mental image of what you want to manifest in your life. You might picture yourself living in your dream home, driving your dream car, or achieving your career goals. You might visualize yourself surrounded by loving relationships, abundance, and success. Whatever it is you want, you can bring it to life in your mind through visualization. But visualization isn't just about seeing things in your mind, it's about engaging all your senses. It's about feeling the emotions associated with your desires as if they're already a reality. So, when you visualize, you not only see yourself living your dreams, but you also feel the joy, excitement, and gratitude that come with it. You immerse yourself fully in the experience, as if it's happening right now. Now, here's where repetition comes into play. When you combine visualization with repetition, you supercharge the manifestation process. It's like adding fuel to a fire. By repeating affirmations or mantras while visualizing your desires, you're sending a powerful message to your subconscious mind and to the universe. Let's go back to the beach vacation example. Imagine you're visualizing yourself on the beach, feeling the warm sun on your skin and hearing the sound of the waves. Now, add affirmations to the mix. As you visualize, you might repeat affirmations like, I am worthy of this vacation. I deserve to relax and enjoy life. Or, I am grateful for the abundance that allows me to travel. By combining visualization with affirmations, you're not only imagining yourself on the beach, but you're also reinforcing positive beliefs about yourself and your ability to manifest your desires. And the more you repeat this process, the more you amplify the power of your intentions. It's like turning up the volume on a song you love. The more you hear it, the more it resonates with you. Similarly, the more you visualize and repeat affirmations, the more aligned you become with your desires and the faster they manifest in your life. So, embrace the power of repetition in your manifestation practice. Choose words or phrases that resonate deeply with your desires, and repeat them with unwavering belief and conviction. Each time you say your words or phrases over and over again, you're making your intention stronger and getting closer to what you really want. It's like building a strong foundation for a house. The more bricks you lay down, the sturdier it becomes. Similarly, the more you repeat your affirmations or mantras, the more solid your desires become in your mind and in the universe. You're basically telling the universe, This is what I want, and I believe it's coming to me. And when you truly trust in this process, when you have full confidence in the power of your words, incredible things start to happen. Think of it like this. When you're baking a cake, you follow a recipe and trust that if you mix all the ingredients together and bake it at the right temperature, you'll end up with a delicious cake. Similarly, when you repeat your affirmations or mantras, you're following a recipe for manifestation. You're combining the right ingredients, your words, with belief and trust, and you're baking it in the oven of the universe. And just like how a cake rises in the oven, your desires start to take shape and manifest in your life. So, have faith in this process. Trust that every time you repeat your affirmations or mantras, you're sending a powerful message to the universe. You're telling the universe exactly what you want, 
and the universe responds by bringing it to you. It's like placing an order with the universe and knowing that it will be delivered to you in perfect timing. And as you continue to trust in the power of your words, as you continue to repeat your affirmations or mantras with unwavering belief, you'll start to see miracles unfold right before your eyes. It's like planting seeds in a garden. At first, you may not see anything happening, but beneath the surface, roots are growing, and soon enough, you'll see sprouts pushing through the soil, reaching for the sun. Similarly, when you trust in the process of manifestation and repeat your affirmations or mantras consistently, you may not see immediate results, but behind the scenes, the universe is working to bring your desires to fruition. And when the time is right, when everything is aligned, you'll witness miracles unfolding in your life. It's important to remember that manifestation is not about forcing things to happen or trying to control the outcome. It's about trusting in the natural flow of the universe and allowing things to unfold in their own time and in their own way. When you trust in the process and let go of any attachment to how or when your desires will manifest, you create space for miracles to happen. And as Neville said, Persist in your assumption, and it will harden into fact. So persist in your repetition practice, and know that your desires are on their way to you. Okay, probably asking someone to go out of their comfort zone is too much to ask. But at least being open to new experiences is something we can all do. I don't know if we realize how important it is for us to get out of our routine once in a while, and put ourselves in environments that make us feel and think in a different manner. Each one of you who is listening to me right now is a creator, and is aware of this great power they have. That's why you love this content about Neville Goddard and the Law of Assumption. So I want to think and reflect on what I am going to say just now. If you are a creator, don't you need any inspiration to create? Have you ever come across passionate painters who look for inspiration for their next painting in nature inside themselves? And basically everywhere? Have you noticed how an author is also a keen observer of people and the world around him? This keen observation helps him find inspiration for his new piece of writing. Similarly, you too are a creator, and you are in charge of creating your own perfect life the way you want. But what would that life look like? Sure, you can say that I want this amount of money, this type of physique and so on. But you have to go much deeper than that. For every desire you have, you have to know how it makes you feel. And you know, how would you know that by observing the world around you by observing people around you, and by opening yourself to new experiences whenever possible? So for the sake of becoming a better manifester, go out of your routine for a few days. If you wake up at 8 a.m., trying waking up at 7 for no reason at all. If you brush your teeth with your right hand, try brushing them with your left. Take small actions that might look insignificant to anyone, but they will be akin to disrupting your routine. That's what you need disruption. Some disruption in your current lifestyle is needed to make you think and feel a different way. Or if you can just go out of your city or your country for a few days, seeing new people and places. Talk to new people who are not part of your everyday life and try to understand life from their perspective. This is crucial for storing your imagination. Sitting on your couch all day and watching new videos on YouTube is not going to change the way you perceive things. You have to find inspiration as a creator for inspiration you need to become a better observer to that is why Neville Goddard greatly emphasized spending some time in silence. When you sit in silence by yourself, you get some time to break free from your incessant thoughts. Your mind is always commenting on one thing or the other. It has an opinion about everything whether it's you who are doing something or some other person. This happens when your mind is on autopilot mode. The worst part about keeping your mind on autopilot mode is that it is going to keep you stuck to the emotions of your past. Because by staying connected to the emotions of your past, you think of the same events again and again. Thinking about the same things over and over again is only going to strengthen the same neural connections in your brain. As those neural circuits harden, they become a permanent part of your personality. This is why so many people try changing their reality and applying the law to their desires. But just because their mind is on autopilot mode, no matter how hard they try, they cannot get out of the same fault loops. Sitting in silence or meditating might seem like the most boring and useless thing to do. And to be really honest, if your mind is used to incessant thinking, 
sitting in silence might be a painful experience for you in the beginning. The moment you will sit down close your eyes and will try to concentrate thousands of thoughts will come rushing in. Most of them will be related to your past and will make you react in some way. A lot of people start meditating and they say that their mind seems to be getting worse. But those who stick through the excruciating first two weeks are likely to stick to it for the rest of their lives. So till now I have to giving you two valuable pieces of advice. And if you use both of them, you will definitely see a huge change in your manifestation capabilities. The first one is to find inspiration by opening yourself to new life experiences. And the second is to sit in silence every day no matter how difficult it might seem. Now in the last part of the video, I am going to give you a few easy steps to manifest anything you want. And you will see how what we have learned till now will help you on your path of reality creation. Once you would have opened up yourself to new experiences and would have become a keen observer, it would be far easier for you to create a desired experience in your mind. This means visualizing yourself in a future where you are living the kind of life you want. It is highly recommended that you use visualization right before you go to sleep. This is what Neville Goddard called SATs and we have discussed this concept in a lot of detail on this channel a couple of times since is the simple technique of visualizing your desired future a couple of times when you are in a very drowsy state just before entering sleep. The fun part of this drowsy state is that your conscious mind is silent at this time, so there are just no thoughts. When there are no opposing thoughts, whatever you visualize will find a path to your subconscious mind with ease. It is important that you practice sets every night before sleep until you become convinced that what you desire is bound to come to your physical reality. Neville called this the naturalness of your desire. The more you practice sets, the more natural your desire will feel to you. Once you are a few days into sets, you can then incorporate the revision technique before bed. The purpose of this technique is to just rewrite any unpleasant past experiences in your mind. Let's say you have an accident as a kid that left you with an injury. So through revision, you will try to create a new memory of your past where there was no accident and no injury. Essentially, you were trying to overwrite the negative experience of your past through the power of your imagination. With all thy getting get understanding, an old adage, but today is true as ever. It has been the teaching of all times that man reproduces the divine nature, and if he does, we shall expect to find in his nature the same qualities that we suppose must be in the nature of life itself. A study of the psychological nature of man verifies the belief in the trinity running through all life. Man is self-conscious, of this we are sure, for he can say I am. This fact alone proves his claim to immortality and greatness. In psychology we learn that man is threefold in his nature, that is, he has a self-conscious mind, a subconscious mind, and a body. In metaphysics we learn that the three are but different attributes of the same life. Man's self-conscious mind is the power with which he knows. It is therefore one with the Spirit of God. It is, indeed, his only guarantee of conscious being. It is from this self-knowing mind that man is able to realize his relationship with the whole, for without it, he would be unhuman and most certainly not divine, but since he has it, he must be divine. It is the self-knowing mind alone that constitutes reality, personality, and individuality. It is the image of God, the essence of sonship, and the personification of the infinite. We recognize, then, in man's self-knowing mind his unity with the whole. For while a drop of water is not the ocean, yet it does contain within itself all the attributes of the limitless deep. Man's self-knowing mind is the instrument which perceives reality and cognizes or realizes truth. All illumination, inspiration, and realization must come through the self-knowing mind in order to manifest in man. Vision, intuition, and revelation proclaim themselves through man's self-knowing mind. And the saints and sages, the saviors and Christs, the prophets and seers, the wise and learned, have all consciously perceived and proclaimed this fact. Every evidence of human experience, all acts of kindness and mercy, have interpreted themselves through man's self-knowing mind. All that we know, say or think, feel or believe, hope or long for, fear or doubt, is some action of the self-knowing mind. Subjective memories we have, and inner, unexpressed emotions we feel. But to the self-knowing mind alone does realization come. 
Without this capacity to consciously know, man would not exist as an express being, and so far as we are concerned, would not exist at all. The self-knowing mind of man proclaims itself in every thought, deed, or act, and is truly the only guarantee of his individuality. In the subjective mind of man we find a law obeying his word, the servant of his spirit. Suggestion has proved that the subconscious mind acts upon our thought without question or doubt. It is the mental law of our being and the creative factor within us. It is unnecessary, at this point, to go into all the details of the subjective mind and its mode of action. It is enough to say that within us is a mental law, working out the will and purposes of our conscious thoughts. Our ability to access and utilize the greater subjective mind, which serves as the foundation for all law and action, and is the servant of the eternal spirit, is a distinctly personal endeavor. Despite the magnitude of this concept, it is true that human beings possess within their subjective minds a seemingly boundless power. This is due to the fact that, subjectively, we are united with the entirety of existence. When our thoughts are absorbed by our subjective mind, they meld with the universal subjective mind and manifest as the law of our lives, in accordance with the one great law of all life. Neville Goddard's teachings are simple and easy to understand. And perhaps that's the reason these teachings can be understood by everyone and everyone can apply them in their lives to make their wishes come true. Neville Goddard discusses the law of thought transmission in detail in Chapter 5 of Prayer, The Art of Believing he says that our thoughts aren't just mere mental constructs, but they are more powerful than anything else. They are vibrations and like other vibrations, they are transmitted like waves. While you are under the power of your thoughts and how they are transmitted, you harness the power of your mind to get the desired outcomes in your life. By focusing on and imagining your desire, you create vibrations of thoughts and your thoughts are transformed into a powerful force that attracts what you want in your life. Thoughts have great power as is evident in our lives. Simply put, we do things inspired by our thoughts. What we say is a reflection of our thoughts and mindset. What we wear, what we eat, where we go, and how we live are all reflections of our thoughts. If somebody talks differently, if somebody has different beliefs, if somebody has a different religion, it is just because he has different thoughts. So it means our lives are reflections of our thoughts. We are under the control of our thoughts every time. And if we want to experience something different, or live a different life, we will have to change our thoughts. When you realize the power of the thoughts, you use them for the betterment of your life. Because you know, these kinds of thoughts can bring happiness into your life. Now let's discuss in detail what the law of thought transmission is. Well, the law of thought transmission is based on the concept that our thoughts are actually vibrational energy, and that they influence our relationships with others. The nature of our thoughts will determine what other people think of us and how they treat us. This means that if we focus our thoughts more positively, we will experience more positive things in our lives. If we look into the details, this can be proven true in everyone's life, and it can't be denied. You see, every time you speak, you're expressing your thoughts. Whatever you say or do expresses what you are thinking, your actions, your decisions, your way of talking, your behavior, your clothing, your beliefs, or even your political affiliation, express what your thoughts are and what kind of person you are. And whenever somebody talks to you or sees you, you can have some idea what kind of thoughts you may have, and their behavior towards you is a reflection of who you are. It means you influence the thoughts of others with everything you have. You can change the thoughts of others by talking in a different way. You can have some impact on their thoughts by wearing some unique clothing. You can influence their behavior towards you by doing something or by saying something. We can say that your thoughts determine your own reality and your reality influences the thoughts of others and determines the reality and the way they treat you. That's pretty simple and easy to understand. The nature of the energy of our thoughts interacts with the energy of the thoughts of others and causes them to reflect back to us experiences worn out of the very nature of our thoughts. While this may appear to you as some modern concept, this concept is proven by quantum physics. The law of thought transmission is a powerful tool that we can use to build positive relationships with others, and we can make use of this law to manifest positive changes in our lives. Well here I would like to put some lines from Neville Goddard's book explaining the working principle of the law of thought transmission a bit further. 
A friend 1,000 miles away is rooted in your consciousness through your fixed ideas of him. You think of him and represent him inwardly in the state you desire him to be confident that this subjective image is true, as if it were already objectified. It awakens in him a corresponding state, which he must objectify. The modified light of consciousness reaches the one to whom is directed and impinges on the mirror of his mind. It causes his mind to vibrate according to the modification, and it goes. Thus it produces in him what was mentally affirmed by you. The subject will express the awakened state within him and remain unaware of the true cause of his action. The subject has no power to resist your controlled subjective ideas of him unless the state you affirm to be true of him is a state. He is incapable of wishing to be true of another. In that case, it returns to you the sender and will realize itself in you. If your fixed idea is not subjectively accepted by the one to whom is directed, it rebounds to you from whom it came.